Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome back to our conversation today. I'm excited because I've got Dr. Darren Williams in studio with me. He's a professor of chemistry at Sam Houston State University. He works in physical chemistry, quantum chemistry, and forensics chemistry. And I'm excited because that gives us the opportunity to address this often levied claim that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, that there's this incredibly high bar. And how do we deal with that? So Darren, it's good to have you in the studio again today. Thank you. It's great to be here. So why do we, or do we have to provide extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims? Or why do we have to put this burden of proof so high sometimes? What do we do with that? Yes, this is typically thrown out in, in response to miracles. You know, they'll say, mm -hmm. oh, there's a claim in the Christian worldview of, you know, pick any one of the miracles. And that's an extraordinary claim. Okay. And so the challenge back to the Christian claim is, well, if that's such an extraordinary claim, I require extraordinary evidence before okay. I will believe it. Right. And is that, I mean, do we operate that way? Is that no, I, something I, that really <laughs> plays out in the way we live? In, in forensic science, there's no category of extraordinary evidence. Okay. There's just evidence. There's right. expert testimony. We cover this in another video about what cl classifies as evidence. But really, in the, in the courtroom, we have different levels of confidence. Okay. And we have a preponderance of evidence, which really is just more likely than not. Okay. And that's the lowest bar, the lowest evidential bar. So not, not being too crass, is that just kind of like it's more like, you know, if I flip a coin, it's more likely to be this than that? Right. You're, so it's, it's more likely, yes. but... It's like our elections. Could be close. 50% plus one vote. Okay, all right, fair. <laughs> that's a preponderance of the evidence. Okay. It's, it's a very low bar, and, okay. and that's a certain, certain cases uh, have that as their evidential mm -hmm. burden. But then for more serious cases, uh, some of the, the higher criminal cases require beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. And that is a very difficult to define because mm -hmm. it's the reasonable person would believe this. Okay. And so this excludes uh, sort of the alien defense. You mm -hmm. know, you've got, a, you've got a dead body in the room and you cannot rule out that an alien appeared, killed the person and left. Okay. Because there would be no evidential trail for that. Right. And it's not reasonable. Okay. Is it possible? It's possible, but not probable. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. It's, it's an, that's an extraordinary claim, but we don't have this bar set in any courtroom that there's an extraordinary burden. That would be beyond all doubt. Okay. And there's, there's no courtroom in the world that operates at a beyond all doubt. And so, really no, no science or historical bar is set mm -hmm. that high either. That's fair, you know, and, and it's interesting just listening to your description there is that part of our uh, uh, job then as apologists is to be asking what's reasonable, if you yes, will. Yes. And when people are kind of pushing back on that to say, how do we respond when people are not being reasonable, if you will, and sure. expecting this incredibly high bar? Yes, and I think that's just to point out that bar is being set very high and maybe even to alert them or challenge them gently, if you will, if you want to remain uh, cordial is to say, you know, it seems like you're setting this bar so high in this particular area of faith or religion, but you probably don't set that bar that high for any other area of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're happy to uh, drive on the interstate, and yet the statistics say you have a high chance of getting into a fatal crash. No, that's you true. You know, so and so you you still feel reasonably safe in your vehicle, and you 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 take the risk. Yeah. So uh, again, just one thing that registers in my mind there is that it seems like, okay, where you're talking about faith, that's kind of a very serious matter. And mm -hmm. so you would want more evidence supporting sure. there. But you're, I think you're correct. There's a lot of things we do in our life that are consequential, if you will, but yes. don't, we don't really have that evidence. We, it's almost like we operate on an intuition or something. We do. So, yes. so how, what, do, what would you recommend to uh, help get past that Barrier, if you will, because it often seems like you yes. know, it's extraordinary evidence. It's kind of sure. like, I really don't want to believe, stay away. Right. How can we, what sorts of tools can we use to kind of maybe penetrate that barrier a little bit? I think just shining a light on it, that, mm -hmm. that you're really asking to be convinced beyond all doubt. And, and we don't have that bar set that high on any other thing in our life. Even in our court system, you know, we will take someone's liberty away for life or even their life away from them in a capital case with the bar of reasonable doubt. And so if, if we can handle with our most serious decisions a reasonable doubt standard, I think that for your own personal life, you could use a reasonable doubt standard. 